Uh, very, very interesting sighting, I would say, although things are quietening, quietening down. Our lion got up to feed some more, which of course put paid to any of the jackal's efforts. And of course, jean raised a very good point in that from where the jackal was, from his perspective or her perspective, I didn't see if it was a boy or a girl, um, it couldn't see the lion. So that lion could have been poised to pounce for all the jackal knew, ready to launch itself over the body of the hippo. Ah. There we go, opportunity, opportunity. Male lion's going to go and lie in the shade. There you go, little jackal. Yes, check quickly that there's no other lions. There we go. And patience pays off for our little scavenger. Happiness abounds and it can tuck right in. Oh, just, just, just check carefully, quickly. Now very soon the hyenas, I think, are going to think about taking the opportunity to sneak around the back of the lion, but for now the jackal can take full, oh cute. <laughs> Bounce, check, eat. Bounce, check, eat. Check quickly. <laughs> and eat. Check and eat. Cece, I don't know. It's a fully grown jackal. Um, I don't know exactly how old it is. I, I couldn't possibly say. I'll tell you that it's over a year old. And that's about as accurate as... Oh, oh, something moved. Something moved. And the wind is blowing, so I can't hear. Is it safe? Is it safe? You need a buddy. You need a buddy system. Somebody can keep an eye on the lion. Speaking of lions, hyenas, and creatures with large and somewhat powerful jaws. Guys, apparently there are some people that are, are very concerned that this hippopotamus was killed by human beings and hacked open with a chainsaw. Um, hyenas have bone crushing jaws and actually lions can break through rib cages as well, especially a male lion. So especially the thin, um, relatively fragile ribs, they would have been pulled open and broken away, probably by hyenas, maybe by the male lion. Is it possible that this, ma this hippo was killed by people? No, not in the middle of the triangle, not the distance from the Mara River. We're right in the center of one of the safest parts, I would say, in any reserve in Kenya. Uh, you know me, I don't pull any punches. If I thought that was a possibility, I would have said so. Um, yes, animals do get killed in, in Africa, and yes, it, it does happen. And yes, certainly, hippo are the, one of the main victims because the Mara River extends out of the national reserves, out of the conservancies, and so do hippo. And yes, they do get hunted, especially because the meat is of exceptionally nutritional, well, has exceptional nutritional qualities to it. So yes, it does happen. Do I think this hippo was killed by a person and cut open? No, I do not. That was done purely by the animals out here. We might not know the exact cause of death. <laughs> Chandra is that jackal keeping you guessing. <laughs> it's hilarious. Just watching <laughs> Chandra trying to keep up with its head movements. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Click, jick, yes, you could probably habituate, rather, I don't want to use the word domesticate, a jackal, in the same way that dogs have been. Dogs, bear in mind, have been domesticated over tens of thousands of years. They really are, they, we have changed their patterns of behavior so that they are completely dependent upon us as, well, not completely, but they are largely dependent upon us as human beings. And we've, we've changed their biology such that we con they consider themselves to be members of our pack. They're social creatures and they love us. Science has proved, thank goodness for all of us dog owners, we already knew this, science has proved that dogs love us. A jackal, one generation of jackal that's been hand raised, is it, it applies to any wild animal out here. Wild animals should not be kept as pets. They really, really shouldn't. We have got dogs and cats and horses and chickens and goats and, and sheep and whatever else we want to keep us company. A wild animal should never be kept as a pet, whether it's a jackal or a lion. And what you find, remember jackal are monogamous. I mean, obviously a lion's slightly simpler to see why that might be, but jackal are monogamous and they form a very close bond to their mate and they have very close family bonds. So now you've got a situation where you've bonded to your jackal. It probably views you not necessarily as its mate, but it certainly views you in that social context and it becomes very possessive. 
and it starts to, if it's a male or if it's a female, if it's a female, it comes into estrus, it's going to start getting angry towards other women. If it's a male, it will start getting territorial around other men, it will start scent marking their pants or their, their trousers, I think is probably better way of describing it. Your couches, your curtains, they become dangerous, they bite, they nip, and they end up being a problem. Wild animals should not be pets. It's something that people have learned time and time and time again, and it's really not fair on them. I'm not lecturing you. I'm saying it is possible, and yes, it will probably form a bond with you, but it's a very bad idea. Oh, hold on. Uh-oh. Ah, Jackal's far too smart to get caught napping. Far too quick. Problem, eh, boy? You don't want anywhere near your hippopotamus, but it's hot and you're full and you don't actually want to eat anymore. You want to go and lie in the shade. But if you go and lie in the shade and that hippo carcass is just that little bit too heavy for you to drag, isn't it? So now what? <laughs> you're going to have to brave the sun for a little bit longer. And the jackal knows it. Ah, the frustrations of life if you're a male lion with a big hippopotamus to defend. While he decides whether or not he's going to sleep here or in the shade, let's go and find out how James's morning is treating him. <laughs> 